Welcome to your next seven Caillou challenge. This one's called Sum of Odd Numbers. Given the triangle of, of consecutive odd numbers pictured here, calculate the sum of the numbers in the nth row of this triangle starting at index one. And so they give a couple examples of this. Notice that if the input is one, they mean row one, starting from the top, has only this element in it, the number one. And so the sum of just one is one. Then look at row two. You have the elements three and five. Three and five add to eight. So if you're passed in two for the second row, uh, you'll return eight and so on for row three, row four, row five to an arbitrary uh, row number. So uh, go ahead and take some time to think about this and pause the video, give it your best effort and come on back when you're ready. So before I go into a solution, you may be struggling with this one. Um, I'll offer a couple hints and then you'll, you can have another chance to pause and try again. So for the way I would recommend to do this, imagine that given any row number, you pretty much only need to know one thing. You need to know what the first value in the row is, right? Because after that, you add two to all of them. And you'll also note that your row number that you're given is the number of elements in the row. The first row has one, second row has two, third row has three, and so on. So if you know, for example, that you're on the third row and the first value is seven, you know it's gonna have three elements and that they're, each one is two more than the, other, than the previous one. So hopefully that's helpful in case you were trying to um, do a lot more than you had to do. So feel free to take this opportunity to pause again if you'd like and try it with that hint. Okay, so I'll go into a solution for this. We're going to start by what I did when I was thinking about this was I was trying to see a pattern. I was thinking, given a row number, how can I get this first value? It's the key to everything, right? And so I just noticed, hey, you got 1, 3, 7, 13, 21. Do you see the pattern there? From the start, you're adding 2, then 4, then 6, then 8, and then 10 if you did out another row. So it's increasing each time, right? You're adding by two more each time. It's like the series of even numbers, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, etc. So I was trying to think of um, ways to describe that relationship. And when I was doing this, you know, you kind of draw out a little map, you know, for row one, the starting value is one. Oh, we could use an arrow that might be a little more expressive. Uh, for row two, the starting value is supposed to be three. For row three, the starting value is supposed to be seven. For row four, the starting value should be 13. And so just from kind of playing around with that, noticing that that sequence, I kind of came up with the idea that how do you relate the row number to this? And so I started looking at, um, this is kind of like the row number squared, right? One squared is one, two squared is four, uh, three squared is nine, four squared is 16. And then I kind of saw that there were some, you know, they didn't match up exactly, but the sort of deviation that I was off, you know, for the first one I was off by one, four minus three is one, nine minus seven is two, 16 minus 13 is three. So it's kind of climbing up one, two, three, right? So I noticed I could use um, that row number minus one to sort of get the value that I needed to adjust this n squared, right? Because it, it wasn't quite right. And I don't need the parentheses here. I just kind of 
use them to show you how much I'm taking off. So this kind of describes a formula for me to get the first value of any of these rows. So I was like, okay, let's make a private static long. We're gonna match the types. Notice we're using long here is because we could be dealing with some larger values. A long is bigger than an int usually. It has more bytes available to hold bigger values. And then I just made a little helper method. It's private because nobody else needs to use it. And I called it get first value for row. And so it takes in a row number. Speaking of that, I'm gonna match. I just like row number better than n. n's pretty generic, nondescript. And so yeah, then I just basically, okay, make this little helper method. You don't need this, but I like to make helper methods and make methods really short, so I do that. Then I said, take the row number, square it, right? I can do row number times row number, or you could use like we did in recent videos, that math.pow function, right? Short for power. You provide two double arguments, the base and the value that you wanna raise it to. But this works too. And then I can say minus row number minus one. And hopefully you'd agree that that describes this equation here. You can put the parentheses around it if you want, you're not hurting anything, but your order of operations are gonna, going to say that this part gets executed first. And so after that squaring's done, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter so much. And then, so I've got this right, and this is kind of the, really the, the problem to solve because once I have this, I can say long current value or right now I'm thinking of it like an initial value is this get first value for row, row number, whatever row you give me. And so here I land and I have the value for the start of the row. Okay, great. Now I have the task of adding up the values in that row. And so I'm going to maintain a, a sum for this purpose. And I'm just going to initialize it with that current value, right? Because I already have one and we know it's part of the sum. And then I don't have to count it when we're looping. I'm gonna create a loop to go over int i equals, I'm gonna start from one, right? Because I already initialized the sum to that first value. So I don't need to add it again. That's why I'm starting at one. I is less than row number, right? Because we said that each row has that many elements, whatever the row number is. First row has one, second row has two, third row has three. And then increment each time. And so, yeah, now we can add these to the sum. Sum plus equals the row number or I'm sorry, the current value, current value. Uh, here, let's do this first. Let's say current value plus equals two, right? Each time you're adding two to get the next odd number. And then I can say sum, add that current value, whatever it is. And by the time that loop is through, my sum should be set and I can simply return it. So I'll go ahead and run a test on this. Expected fail. One negative. Oh, you know what? I think the parentheses do matter here. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that for leading you astray. Note that uh, there is a difference. This would be like uh, if you expanded this out, minus row number plus one, right? If I do it here, it's take away the row number and take away one. So that's slightly different. My apologies for that. 
So we'll test again. And right, you could have taken this one line and used it up here instead of making a separate method for it. But that's the way I like to program. I'm going to get rid of these comments since we don't need them anymore. And satisfy my OCD there. And yeah, let's run, let's hit the larger collection. And good, we're clear to submit. So yeah, hopefully you weren't trying to, I mean, you could imagine the numbers are infinite, right? If you were thought, hey, I'd build up this collection, let's make a dictionary, right? And I'll make the key, the, um, the row number, and then for the entry associated with that row number, I'll make a list of integers, right? So one would map to a list of size one with the one element. Then you'd have an entry with key two that matches to a list of integers three and five, et cetera, on down. And then whenever you get your row number, you just sort of go into your dictionary and say, hey, yeah, give me that fourth one. Okay, it returns you this list. And then you just use a link thing, link method to say sum this list and you got it. But the problem is, you you know, they don't tell you any kind of limit on the input size. So, I mean, are you really going to populate a dictionary to cover, you know, as many of these rows as you possibly can? Uh, and, you know, that uses memory that I don't have to use here. So that's quite a, a benefit too. So yeah, hopefully that one didn't give you too much trouble. We'll go ahead and submit this and check out what other people did. Get our points too. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Wow, that is really cool. They just cubed the row. Wow, that is really cool. See, I just didn't think of that. So this guy may have given, I wanna see his actual, yeah. So this is nice. I like how this guy actually wrote it all out. I'm gonna go ahead and read through that and uh, see how that works out, but that's really cool, right? That's the power of knowing math, right? You can make your life very easy. So I would recommend reading through this. It's really nice that someone took the time to do that. Good on you, M. McKay. Okay. Yeah, lots of people were on that. So yeah, clearly I I was missing out on the party here. Congratulations to you if you knew that property. It's good. And there's nothing against, you know, had you gone online searching, you know, is there a way that I can get the nth row of a triangle of odd numbers? You know, that's it's not cheating, right? Like nobody cares that you look up efficient ways of doing things, you know, when you're working they they actually want you to do that if you can make it as simple as and fast as possible they're not again not using any memory here just simply making a just a quick mathematical calculation so that's that's brilliant cool so yeah i'll see you in the next one hit me up with questions if you want